All right, guys, welcome back for another weekly outlook for the week of March 31st, 2024. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. So again, the weekly outlook process is not changing. We're going to analyze the weekly calendar, perform our top-down analysis on designated markets, uh, plan each trading day, when to ha and how to engage, and plan for contingencies. Um, but this episode, I'm actually going to talk about my ideal trading week and how I would plan you know, this particular week. So usually like my, my training week will start on Sunday. Um, you know, my weekends are more used for relaxing or getting other work done and kind of just disconnecting from the markets uh, because right. The markets are stressful. There's a lot going on, uh, especially in the prop space right now. And you just need some time to, to reset and not be so focused on the market. So what I would recommend, right. Is if you're feeling burnt out from trading education, because there is a lot to learn. You can't just come into the markets and expect that you're going to be on top of your education uh, regimen, you know, seven days a week. It's almost impossible. You're going to end up burning yourself out at some point. So you do need some downtime where you're not so much focused on trading because if you try and uh, try and cram all of this knowledge and all of this experience into such a short time frame, you're not going to be able to retain as much, right? Because just... It's just, you know, human nature to, to eventually kind of burn out and not be able to retain what you're trying to learn. Uh, you're going to get tired of actually looking at charts or, or reading books or articles, things like that. So I always typically use Saturday and Sunday to kind of reset. You know, if I have other work related tasks, that's fine. Um, but more so spend that time with your family, with your friends, um, you know, not on Twitter and just get away from the charts, to be honest. And, you know, kind of reset and refresh for the next week. Unless it's like your time where, let's say if you're working a full-time job and the weekend's the only time that you have to study, well, you're probably going to have to adjust your, your routine a bit, right? But, you know, don't copy what I have here. It's You have to find something that works for you. You need a little bit of everything. You need balance. You need um, dedicated time to study. You need dedicated time to trade, all right? So Sunday in the morning, I'll usually hit the CrossFit or the gym. Um, CrossFit is much more intense, takes me longer to recover, but if I'm going to go to the gym, you know, I'm just going to get some cardio in some lifting and typically I'm trying to aim for four or five days out of the week, uh, maybe five to six days out of the week where I'm training. If I'm trying to do CrossFit, it's, it's much harder to say I'm going to do five days a week, uh, because your body needs more recovery in between those sessions because they're high intensity. There's heavy volume, like you're lifting pretty heavy. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty taxing on the body. So you need more time to recover and you need to eat well. So, you know, in the morning, cross in gym, um, I wish the sauna and cold plunge place is open, but unfortunately they are only open to like noon on the weekend. So unless we go super early in the morning, uh, it just doesn't really fit into our Sunday schedule. You know, it's easier to go Saturday or one day, uh, either Saturday or Sunday, and we'll take one as like an active recovery day. Uh, and then in the PM, like Sunday afternoon, or even you could do this Friday evening or even Saturday evening and sit down and perform your weekly, weekly outlook, right? So all those bullet points that I just outlined for my weekly outlook, right? I'm going to go through the motions and, and do all that after the market's closed for the week, whether that's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, it doesn't matter when you get it done. Cause the market's not open. It's not going to change by the time you sit down in front of the charts on Monday. Uh, just get it done at some point during that, during that weekend. All right, and the Monday through Friday, all right, this would be my ideal trading day if I were to be trading. And I'll, I'll go over two different scenarios. So let's just assume Monday through Friday, I'm going to trade every single day. All right, I'm not trading every day, but just hypothetically speaking, 7 to 7.30 a.m., ideally cold plunge sauna, uh, you know, reverse order actually, sauna and then cold plunge. So I end on the cold plunge. Uh, it just has more health benefits. Your body is more in a um, fight or flight state uh it gets your you know your metabolism going uh wakes you up in the morning much more than coffee and uh you know it spikes your dopamine level so when you sit down in front of the charts your dopamine is much more regulated you don't have to chase losses or feel uh emotionally attached to your trades in my opinion it's a great way to start the day now if you don't have you know access to a cold plunge or sauna just take a cold shower in the morning something that really wakes you up 
uh, puts you in an uncomfortable uncomfortable position and will kind of like level out your your you know um your nervous system before you sit down in front of the charts um, when we get back i'll we'll have breakfast coffee uh at 8 8 a.m around there uh 8 15 to 9 is my pre-market prep sometimes i'll eat breakfast at the desk um or i'll just eat breakfast in the kitchen and then come sit down at my desk 45 minutes to an hour is pre-market prep now this is if i was trading futures if i was trading fx I would pretty much have to do everything an hour earlier to get to the desk by like 7, 7.30. Uh, so you kind of just be more flexible with your times. This is assuming I'm going to sit down for the 9.30 open. All right, so a.m., uh, 9 a.m., you know, ends my pre-market prep. Then from 9 to 9.20, I'll have a 20-minute meditation just to recenter myself, get my thoughts in order, make sure I'm not, you know, emotionally thinking, and just be more focused when I sit down at the, ch at the charts, right, ready to trade. So 9.30 to 12 is really when I need to focus. I cannot have any distractions going on, right? There's no social media. There's no Discord, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm, you know, unless I'm talking to, to my community, um, I'm really have to, I really have to just be dialed into the markets with no distractions, all right? And usually I'll try and be done by 11, but if not, it'll extend till 12. Uh, 12 to 3.30, you know, I'll have lunch. I'll have other work-related tasks working on other businesses, things like that, up until 4. Uh, and even 12 to 12.30, right, if I have time to, to journal my trades for the day, I will. Um, but towards the end of this, right, we have evening prep and journal. But, uh, you know, if I can get it done early in the day, I'll just cross it off my list. Then 4 to 5 p.m., uh, I usually like working out in the afternoon. I'm just not a morning person, really. So me trying to work out in the morning just doesn't really, really fit well, well, well with me. And CrossFit, again, is high intensity, so... I used to go to the, the 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. classes back in New York, but I found like when I sat down at the desk, I was so dra drained and I just wanted to like take a nap or something that I couldn't, I couldn't focus um, because there were such high intensity uh, program sessions. So now I just try and work out towards the afternoon and I, I pretty much like it more. I enjoy it more. I'm more awake. Um, you know, even if I have, uh, a bad day in the markets it at least allows me to give me time to like get some steam off my chest and and really just get in tune with my mental and physical right so four to five p.m you see your crossfit or gym you know if i'm if i had to have a recovery day i'll, I'll at least try and get a run in uh 5 30 p.m dinner usually 5 30 6 30 around that time and not really working uh working so much kind of just uh you know enjoying my time alone doing whatever I need to do, uh, just having the freedom to do whatever I want to do, really. Uh, and then up until, se you know, 7.30, I'll, or whatever time, really, before I go to bed, though, I'm going to have my evening prep, going over the markets, uh, prepping for the following day, and basically writing down my trading plan for the following day, right? Because all of your trading days should be prepped ahead of time. If you're not prepped, you're going to be caught off by surprises, and that's not what we want. We don't want to be caught off off guard and not have a plan when something happens all right so if i wasn't trading we're pretty much going to take out this block right here 9 30 to 12 we're going to remove that block and just replace it with work related tasks all right so again you know from 9 till 3 30 you might not even do need to do a meditation if you're just going to have regular work, work related tasks um but essentially this is my ideal trading day you know, it doesn't go exactly as planned to this, but if you're disciplined enough and you get the majority of these tasks done at those specific times, you're going to be much more disciplined and, um, you know, have a much better routine rather than just waking up, sitting at the desk and clicking a button, right? So having a structure, having actual hours on when you're going to trade and when you're not going to trade uh, is so important because it's going to reduce your trade frequency it's going to reduce your time in front of the chart. So you don't want to be a slave to the screen, even as a full-time trader. All right. So this is my ideal trading day. Um, you know, again, if I'm not trading, I'm just going to replace those trading related tasks, right? Pre-market prep and trading session with other things. All right. And then Friday, obviously, um, you can get this done Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I prefer to do a Friday because it's fresh in my mind is perform my weekly review. Uh, so that's, you know, things I did right, things I did wrong, and how, I can, how can I improve in my trading, all right? 
So Tradezilla, again, great tool, allows you to create a session for the week, create the session for the week, you can see all your trades, all your statistics, and then just write notes out. You know, see how you performed on specific days. Did you follow your plan on all of those days, right? And kind of grade yourself as you're going along. All right, so we're gonna get into the calendar for the week of March 31st. Again, we need to be mindful that the quarter just ended. Uh, we have NFP this week. So with those things in mind, we have to be very cautious going into the next quarter, right? We're gonna see that manipulation or accumulation phase early in the in the month or in the quarter. So Again, NFP weeks, we have an NFP protocol that you guys all should know by now. I'm not going to go over it, but essentially we need to be flat on the market by Wednesday a.m. session. Um, so let's just going over the calendar. Monday, 10 a.m. is ISM manufacturing. Uh, so we're, we, we're possibly going to have a trade around the London close session going into the lunch hour. Uh, Tuesday, we have Jolt's job openings. You know, these are not crazy movers. We can... If we if we see a position in the market, we can take it before those news releases. I just prefer trading after after the news releases, but uh, these late news releases, 10 a.m., where they're not having as much of an effect on the market and they're not as volatile, it's okay to have positions in before the market. You just have to manage your risk appropriately. Uh, Wednesday, you know, everybody loves to see these days, Wednesday, and they say, oh, there's a bunch of news. I can trade this day. Um, but during NFP weeks, I just find that these Wednesdays can be extremely choppy and volatile. So, you know, that's the whole reason why during NFP weeks Wednesday, I don't even really worry about trading. Um, because again, when you're thinking like a big player in the markets, what are they going to be waiting for? NFP is, uh, you know, a pretty big driver in our economy. So NFP weeks, if you study NFP weeks long enough, you're going to notice like by Wednesday, things get more uncertain. All right. And people love to, to like cherry pick and say, oh, this week was great though. All right, but what if, <laughs> if you trade for five, 10 years, you're going to see that it's just not worth trading those days. Yes, you can cherry pick and say, oh, Kyle, you know, last Wednesday or last NFP week, Wednesday was perfect. Well, that's, ch that's cherry picked scenario. All right, trade these weeks long enough and you're going to notice that Wednesday is more often than not pretty sideways. So yes, historically, that's the data I'm trying to rely on. I don't want to, you know, even this past year, December was amazing. But can you expect that? That's not, that's not like a normal market condition on, you know, pretty much historically. So that's just a cherry pick scenario where you say, oh, Jade, I missed out on all these trades because you told me this and this happened. I'm just trying to make sure you guys are trading in a safe manner where, you know, you're not going to be uh, assuming that, every single Wednesday during NFP weeks is going to be a tradable day, right? Because it could be tradable this week, but it, let's say if you just continue trading every single Wednesday during NFP week, it's going to really impact your overall equity curve, all right? So just because you can cherry pick one uh, scenario doesn't mean it's the right decision. You know, Thursday, obviously, I'm just going to avoid all these news releases just because there's things that are out doesn't mean that they're going to be tradable, all right? Uh, and then NFP obviously um, can be possibly be tradable, but post NFP. So when NFP comes out, you have to give it at least 30 minutes to an hour just to let the market settle down. Then you kind of get the real direction on where it's trying to go. All right. So we're going to start, start off our, let me just hop over in here. We're going to start off our analysis on the quarterly chart. So as, as you can see, we are analyzing the quarterly chart. So each one of these candles is three months, All right? So if you notice this countdown, we have two months and 29 days left on the next candle, All right? So we just closed the last quarterly candle. So Q1 is in the books. All right, so what we're studying right now is this breaker, All right? So this is our up close candle prior to the run on stop. So we have this run on stops right here. And then we have this low resistance liquidity run that we've taken out. We also have a low resistance liquidity run down here. But I'm not looking at this one. I'm looking at this breaker, which also overlaps with this mitigation block. So this wick right here, you can see it. This wick right here is our mitigation block wick. Uh, and it makes it a mitigation block because we didn't run out this sell side liquidity here. All right, so this is mitigation in here. So this wick, I'm looking at 50%. 
you know, constant, consequent encroachment of that wick. And then we have this buy side imbalance. All right, so we have this quarterly buy side imbalance that we've traded down into. Uh, this was Q3 of last year, right? Q4 and then Q1. <clears throat> so, you know, we've really kind of traded away from the 50% mark of that buy side imbalance, which get, gives me reason to believe that, you know, Q1 closed bullish. I would like to see this continue higher. And our first target would be up here, right? Just based on a quarterly basis, all right? So there's a lot of reasons for me to still believe that we want to remain bullish on this, but, um, you know, I'm not 100% confident on it just because we've traded away from this sell side imbalance pretty aggressively, all right? I could be completely wrong this quarter and this could just completely collapse, but, um, you know, we'll have more information as the quarter progresses. Then we're going to dive down into our monthly chart. So... I don't want these charts to get too cluttered because there is a lot in here that I, I need to go over. But again, I can't cover everything. All right. So here's our monthly levels. Uh, you know, if I cover every little level in here, it's going to get overwhelming for you guys. You're not going to be able to follow along. So our monthly chart, right? We have our buy side imbalance here. And then our swing low. We have a swing low here. And then if you noticed last month, we traded down into this uh, mean threshold of this. Uh, monthly order block. So here, this wick traded down in the mean threshold of that monthly order block and have traded away, right? We're above this uh, volume imbalance. When I mar the markings go away, we'll zoom in a little bit. So we are above this volume imbalance in here, but we are also trading up into this bearish balance price range. Okay, so, right, we see this fair value gap, but we also have this fair value gap on the other side. So in order for us to continue higher, we need to respect this volume imbalance and get above the balance price range and then possibly target this high back here, All right? So we have, we're pretty much kind of trapped in between order flow. We have this monthly order block and then we have obviously the bearish BPR that we're contesting with. But because we ran out, uh, last month we ran out the previous month low and rejected from there. Let's see if this month still has legs to send us higher. All right, uh, weekly, let's throw our weekly levels back on here. Do I have anything? Am I, missing? I think I'm missing some. There we go. So <clears throat> we have this weekly buy side imbalance that we've created on the, I believe it's on the close of last week. Oh. So my invalidation level really on a weekly basis is this weekly buy side imbalance. So we need to respect this level and trade higher to this intermediate intermediate term high. Um, this is like our, this is our mitigation block basically. Um, but we're just only trading into the wick right now. We need to see it trade higher and against this sell side imbalance. All right. So we, <clears throat> if we get above this intermediate term high, we're possibly going to target this low resistance liquidity back here. All right. So, you know, again, I already covered all these levels on the last week's weekly outlook. Um, these levels haven't changed. Obviously, we're looking at the same narrative and we're expecting higher prices on the dollar. Let's drop down into a daily. Again, I think I'm going to stop at the daily. You guys can go in and, you know, study what exactly happened last week, but pretty much what I outlined last week, exactly what happened. And we got our Tuesday low week profile, right? Thursday, uh, Friday was a non-trading day. Um, the markets were closed. So, you know, as I outlined, this is our bullish breaker. I don't have it drawn on here, right? Because I already have so many things drawn. This is our bullish breaker because we took out this uh, consolidation back here with this run. All right, so we have our bullish breaker in here. We came down into that. We didn't retest this volume imbalance, but we filled in the buy side imbalance that was created on Monday. All right, so we have this buy uh, fair value gap that was created on Monday. So this is Monday's low, right? You see how they took out Monday's low and then just sent it higher. And then what did we do? We just traded up into this volume imbalance here. All right, so it wasn't a huge move last week, but it pretty much panned out, <clears throat> panned out exactly as I outlined it for you guys. 
and we have this volume balance now that we're also going to see if we get any support going into next week. All right. So again, we have this daily volume, uh, daily fair value gap in here, this volume imbalance, that weekly buy side imbalance with this blue shaded box, All right? There's a lot of, uh, this breaker bullish breaker. So there's a lot of bullish PD raised below us. We want to see it, uh, you know, respect basically 50% of this daily inverted fair value gap that we're now retesting. We have to get above this volume imbalance and then see if we are, we're able to trade higher. So that's basically what I'm expecting Monday and Tuesday, right? If Monday and Tuesday just run up here to this intermediate from high, that's it. We're done for the week. All right. We don't want to give back what we've made Monday, Tuesday, uh, during Wednesday NFP weeks, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, you might as well just sit out and you might even want to just completely ignore Friday as well. All right. But if you're more active, you want to trade, you can trade post NFP. Just give yourself some time for the market to digest everything that's going on. All right. So I don't know if I have too much else to cover. I just wanted to keep this one quick. Um, you know, if you guys have any comments or questions, drop them in the comments. If you don't have anything nice to say to me, then just keep it moving. All right. So I'm going to keep doing this probably for another week just to show you guys my, the outline of my, my mental process, how I actually trade the markets and uh, how I just completely shut off the noise and just focus exactly what my plan is. I'm not looking at other people's plans. I don't care what their, their biases are. At the end of the day, you're the, one that, you're the one that has to click the button. So the bias should come from you. You're gonna have much more confidence in your trading if you rely on your own decision-making rather than someone else's, all right? So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.